There's no question that what you say when you're giving a speech and presentation in business is incredibly important. But there's also no question that what you don't say is just as important and that how you deliver that presentation is equally important to the words that you choose. In this video, we'll talk about the importance and, and some tips for effective nonverbal delivery in presentations. First, let's briefly outline the different delivery styles that are available to a speaker. The first is manuscript, where you have every word of your speech uh, typed out, presented right there in front of you, and you're delivering it then from essentially that script. You could also have a memorized speech where you don't have any notes in front of you, you don't have any note cards, or you don't have a manuscript. You're just giving it totally from a memorized uh, recitation. Impromptu is where you have little to no time to prepare and maybe just sketched out a few ideas on what it is you want to talk about, uh, but you have very little time, if any, to prepare what it is you want to say in advance. Extemporaneous sort of combines these other formats where extemporaneous speeches are given with lots of time and lots of preparation, but they're delivered from a series of um, outlined notes, not a manuscript, and they're not memorized. You have the notes there in front of you typically, but they're not a full manuscript in the sense that you have every word typed out and planned out. You have your general ideas and, and the structure of your speech put down in bullet point type format, but then you deliver the speech and select the wording in that moment. Now that we know the different types of delivery styles, let's take a look at the two different major categories of delivery, which are vocal and physical. So we're going to take a look at each of these, the vocal elements of nonverbal delivery, as well as the physical elements. For vocal delivery, I'd like to offer a few tips for vocal delivery. First, you want to use vocal variety. Most people don't think of their voice as nonverbal delivery they think of it as verbal but verbal involves only the words that you choose vocal delivery is incredibly important and we want to to provide some variety within that vocal de delivery including variations in the volume that we're using we ought to be softer or louder depending on what it is we're trying to convey we ought to in infuse some different pitch think of this as different notes if you read sheet music you know it's different notes on the piano keys the different piano keys have a different pitch and we ought to v vary the pitch of our voice as well if we do not then we become monotone like this and and it's very unpleasant to listen to for long periods of time and you sound like a robot so we want to throw in some differences in pitch and vary the pitch of our voice we also want to vary the rate of delivery, the speed at which we deliver our, our words, depending on what you know, emotion we're trying to, to elicit from the audience or what we're trying to convey. We may speak slower or we may speed up our rate of speech. We can also think of pause as a type of vocal variety and use it for vocal variety. When we want to add some emotion, we can, we can insert a bit of a pause. Or if we're starting or ending a quote, we can pause before the end, of the end or beginning of that quote uh, to, to indicate the, the, the separation of that quote from our own words. There are all kinds of reasons and, and ways that we can use pause as a part of our vocal variety and to infuse effective vocal delivery. Whatever variations we're using, we ought to have vocal variety. Again, we want to avoid being monotone. We want to avoid being too repetitious so that we're not putting the audience to sleep. Another tip is to match your emotion and enthusiasm with the message. If you're giving a really somber topic, you shouldn't be really upbeat and, and, and you know, kind of hyper like this. You should be have a more tone of voice that is more somber and slow things down a little bit. But whatever it is, we ought to match our emotion and our enthusiasm with the uh, words that we're actually speaking. They ought, to, they ought to match up. We ought to be careful to properly pronounce words. Uh, if we can't pronounce a word, then we ought to replace it with something that we can pronounce, but hopefully we'll just be able to work on that so that we can effectively pronounce a word and we'll practice it in advance so that we can properly pronounce any words or terms. We need to properly articulate our words. In other words, we need to use our mouths to form more crisply the words so that they're easier to understand. We need to remember the impact of dialect. Um, Dialect meaning, you know, an accent or something like that, or even just turn of, a turn of phrase that would be more verbal, 
but uh, but but dialect in terms of an accent it can be endearing to an audience when you have a similar accent or one that they enjoy it could also be detrimental if it's an accent that they look down upon so you want to be sure that your dialect matches the expectations of that audience and at the very least doesn't distract the audience or make it more difficult for them to understand what it is you're saying So in addition to using our voice as an element of nonverbal communication during delivery of a presentation, we can also use our body, our physical delivery, to enhance our presentation. So a few tips for physical delivery. First of all, be sure that you're maintaining eye contact with the audience. Now, this does not mean just stare singularly at one person in the audience to an uncomfortable level, but your eyes ought to be on the audience more than they are on anything else. They shouldn't be buried in your notes or looking far above the audience or off to the side or whatever. We ought to be maintaining eye contact with the audience as much as possible and certainly more than we are not. It's okay to look at your notes. That's why they're there, but be sure you're giving a brief glance down and then um, re-engaging the audience with your eye contact. We want to be sure we're dressed appropriately. And notice we don't say that we ought to be dressed up or dressed down or whatever. It's dressed appropriately, depending on who you're speaking to and what you're speaking about. The appropriate dress attire may be different for every crowd, but, uh, but we need to be sure that we're dressed appropriately in a way that is not going to distract the audience from our message. That's the number one thing we want to avoid distraction. So dress in a way that is appropriate for both the content of your speech and the context of your speech. We want to stand confidently. If, if the audience can't feel like we believe in what we're saying ourselves and believe in ourselves in general, then they're not going to believe in us either. They need to have that confidence in us. So we need to stand confidently, whether we feel it or not. If you're not feeling confident, then fake it till you make it. But we need to stand with confidence and deliver that presentation. We got to gesture naturally. Some people will say, well, you need to have X amount of gestures or you need to use your hands less or whatever. The truth is, again, here, the, the goal is to avoid distraction. It's distracting when we use our gestures too much and too wildly. And that can take away from the audience retaining and, and accepting our message. But in the same way, if you're somebody who talks with your hands and you shove them in your pockets so that you don't use them at all, then that's going to be a distraction as well, because it's going to look like you're in a straight jacket. You ought to gesture naturally, so long as those natural gestures don't distract the audience from, from your message. We also ought to move freely. Now, again, we need to be careful here. This is not encouraging you to pace or do jumping jacks or, uh, you know, somersaults or whatever on the stage, but we ought to move about the stage freely so long, again, as it does not distract the audience from our message. Now, if you're tied to a particular spot because of a microphone or something like that, then that is also a consideration. But if we have the ability, then we ought to feel free to move freely so that we can engage more of the audience and so that it releases some of that nervous energy that we no doubt have about giving a presentation in the first place, but feel free to move freely so long as it does not distract the audience. And don't forget to smile. Don't forget to smile. This is so important. Uh, the, the audience should feel like you're having fun, like you're enjoying what you're talking about. Again, even if you're not, fake it till you make it, right? Just smile. Let the audience know you're happy to be there, you're happy to be talking about what you're talking about, and, and that, that will help them relax and enjoy the presentation more as well. Okay, a few more tips that I wanted to provide for you. We've touched on this a, a few times now, but we want to eliminate distractions in general. Uh, no matter what we do, we want the audience focused on our message. And so that means eliminating whatever distractions we can that are within our control. In addition to the things that I've already mentioned, we want to do things like avoid gum. That's a pretty basic public speaking standard, but nobody wants to hear or see you chomping your gum while you're up there and it's going to make your articulation suffer and you're just not going to be as effective as a speaker when you're chewing gum. You got to ditch the hats. And I say this fully as somebody who wears hats as much as possible throughout the day. Uh, I love wearing hats, but hats are a distraction. They're, they're not considered appropriate for a speech. So unless they're a specific part of the dress that you have, you have a specific reason for wearing that hat, you got to ditch the hat. Avoid wearing graphic t-shirts or things. Now, probably while I've been saying this, you've been reading this t-shirt that's on the, on the screen right now, right? That's the problem. If you have graphics on your t-shirt or graphics on whatever, that's what the audience is going to pay attention to. Now, if it's part of a visual aid, that's great. You want them to pay attention to it, but otherwise it's just a distraction and it's something that you can control. 
Try and control your fidgeting as much as possible. These are repetitious movements that uh, that don't really serve any purpose. They're just releasing nervous energy, but uh, but they can be just a distraction for the audience. The audience is going to focus more on that than they are what you're saying. Avoid dancing, swaying, or pacing. Um, you know, dancing meaning literal dancing, first of all, unless, again, it's part of your speech, or, you know, swaying back and forth, dancing like you got to go to the bathroom or whatever. That's not great. Uh, that doesn't serve your purpose and is, is a distraction for the audience. And avoid as much as possible vocal fillers like, um, uh, yeah, those types of things. Um, that, uh, again, they're just there to fill silences. They're not there to... to provide content or help the audience understand or be connected to your message. So just leave them out. We also need to have the ability to adapt to a location or situation. This may include things like the number of audience members. Is this going to be a smaller audience or a larger audience? And if you know that in advance, how can you prepare for that? Uh, but what if you get in there too, and it's different than you expected? You expected a smaller audience, but you have a bigger one or vice versa. You have a smaller audience than you expected. We need to be able to adjust to the number of audience members. We have to be able to adjust to the size of a room. Are you giving this presentation in, in like a traditional classroom setting where everybody's facing forward and at a desk and has a writing space and things like that? Or is it more of an auditorium where they're in these different kind of auditorium style seats? Uh, or is it some other type of arrangement? So we need to think about the size of a uh, size of the room as well as the arrangement of these seats that will determine you know, how big do our presentational aids need to be? How loudly do we need to speak? Are we going to need to use a microphone? How is this going to affect engagement throughout the presentation? Those types of things. So consider the size of the room as well as the seating arrangement. What technology is going to be available? Are you going to have access to a computer uh, and, and projector? Or are you going to have access to the different uh, software programs that you might want to use as part of your presentation? Are you going to be using a microphone? And if so, what kind? Is it a is it a handheld? Is it a lavalier mic? Is it connected to a podium? Are you at a podium where you got to stick to that? Is there going to be a whiteboard? Those types of things. Uh, we ought to be uh, adjusting to all of the different technologies that are available and different um, speaking uh, options that we have. Um, so keep those things in mind as well. So in a nutshell, when giving a presentation, it should be our goal to be as natural as possible as a speaker. Um, pretend it's a conversation, really, more than a presentation. We ought to be enthusiastic because if you don't care about your topic, then the audience won't either. We need to be confident. Because again, we, you know, if, if we don't believe in ourselves, the audience is not going to believe us uh, or believe anything we have to say. You need to be direct. Don't beat around the bush. Don't try and be too fancy. Just get out there and give your best presentation. And we need to practice. Practice is probably the most uh, underrated aspect of, of public speaking uh, in terms of effectiveness than the, the, that there is because uh, with with you know when we practice well we get more comfortable with our speech the audience is going to gain confidence in that they're going to pick up on that so practice is an absolutely essential element in giving effective presentations if you have questions about the nonverbal aspect of presentations or anything else related to giving a speech, please feel free to email me. In the meantime, I hope this has provided some insight into some things you ought to consider for the next time that you are tasked with giving a business presentation and how you can do so more effectively.